Ah, good evening, so I'm here with my second review. This is the other revolver I got from the Northern Shooting Show in Harrogate on Sunday. And this is the Gletcher NGT RF Silver. They do it in black as well. And there's not a lot of information on the actual box apart from the back, which tells you a bit of information. I'll just put it there so you can, you'll be able to read that. So what I've done, I've um, done a crony test on her, like I did with the Schofield yesterday. Uh, also, I was aiming at a can while I was crony testing her at 12 and a half meters. And I'll show you the can when I show you the crony results. So go for the revolver. So <clears throat> what you've got in the, in the box, you've got the manual. It's a good manual actually. Lots of detail, yeah. Uh, this uh, revolver is field strippable, yeah, and it does actually explain how to do it. Um, if you know, we, we initially I did, did struggle because uh, there was a thing I, I, I forgot to read actually on the instructions, yeah, and I'll explain that. So, yeah, it is field strippable and it's in uh, another language, it's in German, and I think I believe it's probably in French as well, yeah. Oh, it's in Russian actually, no, oh, oh. <laughs> that's interesting, <laughs> yeah, Russian and German. <laughs> And English. That's English. <laughs> Interesting. Right, so, by the by, move on. So, this is the revolver. Uh, so this is called the NGTRF. Um, you can see on the actual barrel there, you should be able to see that it says it's rifled. Now, interestingly, uh, it's not rifled all the way to the end. In fact, it looks like it's rifled only about halfway. Okay, so it's a bit like the uh, Madame Western... Um, DW715, where it's got six inch barrel, but it's only rifled two and a half inches. So this is, it's probably about, what, three and a half, four inches probably in total, but it's only rifled to that point there, at which point that sits inside another cylinder. So obviously when it clears the rifling, it could actually potentially, you know, lose, you know well, come off the actual inside, the, the rest of the barrels going out, which would affect accuracy. Now, one thing I've noticed through the crony as well is that it doesn't do a lot of shots this one, uh, maximum 42. In fact, it started to tail off at uh, 35, which is uh, five cylinder, so it's a seven shooter by the way, yeah. But it seems pretty good. I mean, <laughs> nowhere near as consistent as a Schofield. Um, it did, I think it did 40, over 28 shots, it did 41 FPS spread. Um, so it's, uh, the second, the first shot was quite high, and then the second shot was 2.0408 foot pounds, and then it dropped to 1.59 foot pounds on the 29th shot, and then it tailed off. Okay, um, so the overall spread over all 35 shots was on like 106 uh, FPS, but 10 was at the at the first shot, and the rest was as it tailed off. Okay, so it may well improve with use because um, obviously it's a rifle barrel, and the more lead you put down it. Um, obviously, the, the better the seal will get. It Maybe it may may well improve. Okay, so going on to the actual revolver. Now you you got a safety down here, and something I did notice, which I probably read in the manual, was um, the safety comes on and it locks the trigger, but you can't put the safety on with a hammer cocked. It won't move. Okay, but you can decock it. Okay, like so. So it's double action and single action. Right, you've got a loading gate here, which you open, like so. Now you can actually drop the shelves out by turning it and rotating it. It'll only rotate one way, okay, that way. You can't rotate uh, anti-clockwise. So you rotate it, pop your pellet in, or you can take the shelves out, load your pellets, and then drop them into the chambers. Once you've done all seven, close the gate again. And uh, there you notice, but at the top of this gate here, you'll see it engages in that to the cylinder. So as you roll, it, uh, as you pull the trigger, it rotates and it engages in there. So it sort of locks the cylinder in position, which is really, really good. Um, sights of obviously basic, yeah, fixed sights. Uh, shooting at a tin can at 12 and a half meters. Um, she seemed to be shooting slightly to the left and I shall show you the actual can in a bit. Um, lovely grip, uh, that's your piercing, yeah, for your CO2. So basically just like the Schofield, you take the side of the grip off, yeah, pop your CO2 in and then you screw that up till it pierces. Uh, again, these grips are really nice, they look wood but they're obviously they're plastic. Yeah, just snap into place and it's, it's a really comfortable revolver, okay? So you can actually decock it with one hand like that, see? No problem. Uh, like I said, you can't actually put the safety on with it actually with a hammer cocked, just like the Schofield actually. So yeah, rifling's about here. Um, from what I can tell by looking down the barrel, uh, did clean it. 
Um, apart from that, really nice, really nice build. Um, not as powerful obviously as the Schofield, um, but uh, and it's, I don't think it's as accurate. I think mainly due to the fact that you've actually got uh, a shorter barrel, but also it's not rifled near the end. If it's been rifled sort of there, because don't forget, the Schofield is a smooth bore, but it's smooth bore all the way. It's 4.5 millimeters all the way to like that point there. Well, this is only like rifled 4.5 millimeters to about halfway, and then that actual bore becomes slightly larger than 4.5 millimeters. That's the same with the Dan Western 715 or any, and also the uh, the new M29. I looked at that, and that's also got very similar short rifle barrel, and that will aff affect the accuracy. In fact, I think really thinking about it now, it might have been better to get the BB version of this and put pellet shells in it because <laughs> the BB bore of the of the barrel would have been 4.5 millimeters probably all the way to the end so potentially I think it'd be like the Schofield where it'd probably be more accurate and you might even get a bit more grunt out of it because you might you might if it's a good quality barrel with a 4.5 millimeter head you might get a better seal like the Schofield and thus you've got to get a bit more energy out of it so yeah I mean I'm not a fan of these I didn't realise actually the, the rifling stopped there, you know, because I'm not a fan of that at all. I'd rather it either the single action army Colt all the way to the end to there, yeah. Um, uh, all the Webleys, all the Webley revolvers, right rifle and a good quality rifle barrel. So that's the out, only downside about this is it that might be the reason why it's only producing uh, only 35, 42 shots max because. You do lose a lot of CO2. It, it seems very heavy on CO2, but it might improve with use. Um, yeah, but it's fun to shoot. Yeah, it's, it, it's a good, really nice replica. Now, field stripping. Yeah, here we go. Now, this is, I'm going to do this on camera. Could be a bit fiddly, but what you do, better turn it over. Obviously, this is uh, um, obviously unloaded, no gas in it. So what I should do, the best thing is probably drop all the shells out first. So open the gate, rotate it like that and they just fall out. So the cylinder is now empty, seven shells, you can close the gate back up. And what you have to do, you push this uh, rod in, you push it in, screw it, pull it out, rotate this that way, okay? And then you've got to pull this out. Now, it might be a bit tight. Nope, there we are, I did grease it up. I put this apart, there you go. So you pull it out and then you just push, pop the cylinder out you got to open, sorry, forget that, don't forget to open the gate, got to open the gate as well, that's it, and then this just pulls out, like so, towards you. There you go, so the cylinder's out. Uh, yeah, it took me a while to actually get this pretty fluid, and then obviously, that reverse, pop it back in. Yeah, you must remember to uh, open the gate, the loading gate, before you pull the cylinder out towards you. Yeah, take your, your barrel, your cylinder uh, spigot, should we say, yeah, pop that back in. Oh, no. da, 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 da. You're doing this one handed on your okay, engage in that, that's it, like so. Push that all the way in, like so, lock it, push it in like that so it's flush. Pop that back up there, push that back in, rotate it till it's locked, okay? Uh, shut your gate, and there you go. Okay. Yeah, so single action, it's a really nice trigger. There's actually um, no no control, no creep on this. A little bit of creep on the Schofield, but this actually, it's a little heavy, but it breaks when you do pull it. It breaks really cleanly. Yeah, it may well improve with use as well. Uh, double action. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not as smooth, nowhere near as smooth as the Webley revolvers that I have. But yeah, it's not about a game that may well improve with, with use as well. So basically that's how you field strip it. Uh, so if you want to clean your barrel, what little rifle barrel there is there, obviously it's about only about halfway. Or say for instance you do get a pellet stuck, you can actually take it, take the cylinder out and then push the pellet out you know, with a rod or something like that, wooden, a wooden dowel or something like that. Okay, so that is the... NGT, yeah, it says actually NGT, NGT there, and uh, yeah, it's really nice, really nice quality finish, well, well made. Um, yeah, the only thing I'm 
I'm not happy really with it. Is it should I prefer it to be rifled? Yeah, you know, at least about you know half in from the end of the actual barrel, and that way you'd probably get more more accuracy. Uh, going on to accuracy, by the way, uh, looking a quick look at the actual tin can. So this is the tin can I had at uh, twelve and a half meters. Now don't you see this mark here? But that is I had that facing the front, yeah, and you can see that. It's sort of shooting like slightly to, well, I don't know really, it's sort of like a bit central and slight to one side. So um, I think it was shooting slight to the left, because I was shooting, shooting this in single action through my chronograph. Um, yeah, it's, it's obviously going through, but not to the same extent as the Schofield. The Schofield was literally punching the hole through, where this is actually just knocking it, because obviously you've got a, a fair difference in, in energy, where you're talking like uh, an average of 1.72 uh, foot pounds energy. If I show you the graph, this is the graph from the chronograph for the NGT. Uh, see what I mean? See where it tails off here? So that's shot 29. Yeah. Um, but the overall um, energy, overall 35 shots average, was 1.72 uh, foot pounds energy, where the Schofield was uh, 3.16 over its 54 shots. So obviously the Schofield was shooting much, much, much harder and much more efficiently and much more consistently as well. So yeah, this may well improve with use, yeah. But if you want a nice replica, yeah, this is very nice. Um, it'd be fine for tin can, blinking no problem. Um, like I said, I managed to hit that. A bit of practice, I could probably improve. Whether I could hit out, out to uh, 20 meters like the Schofield was capable of, you know, probably capable of, then um, I'm not sure. But I will be doing an outdoor shooting review, and uh, as long as the, it's not too windy, uh, we'll see how she performs. So, yeah, really nice. It's uh, another addition to uh, the collection. If you're looking for a nice, um, like a classic, you know, a replica, and yeah, I, I really do like it. Yeah. I, you know, like I said, the only thing I wish they hadn't done is only made the barrel there, uh, the rifle barrel there. You know, because, you know, it, it's, I don't understand why you do that. You go to all the effort of making a really nice revolver and then you affect, you affect the accuracy of it by putting only half a rifle barrel in. Which is what happened with the Dan Weston 7.5, the, the second series, where uh, the early ones, the early Dan Weston 7.5s, by the way, had a fully rifle barrel. Only the one I bought it was half rifled or less than half rifled and same with this. But if you really want an accurate revolver, um, and we're talking about a fully rifled barrel revolver, get yourself a Webley Mark VI. I'd recommend the two twos in, in the four inch and the six inch, or a single action Colt. Yeah, a five and a half inch barrel, or I think they do a seven and a half inch barrel as well, as long as they're fully rifled, because those two revolvers, uh, brilliant. I mean, the single action Colt out to single. I was, I'm shooting single handed, yeah, out to 15 20 meters, and I was just banging those cans down one after another, yeah, dead easy, yeah. So, yeah, if, you, if you're looking for one of these, yeah, recommend it, uh, yeah, so still good fun. Uh, but if you want an out and out accurate revolver, yeah, go for a Webley Mark VI or a single action Colt. Hope you like the little review. Thanks for watching.